you tell us a little bit about the work that you do online? Sure. So, you know, I'm uh, a pediatrician in practice, and I kind of translate my life experience through a blog, which is what so many people do. Um, but I have the fortune to partner with a health system where I write a parenting or mommy blog, really, where I journey my life as a mom of two boys and my partnership with my husband, who's also a subspecialist um, and physician. And I talk about kind of what it feels like to see patients, what I'm hearing about in the news about controversial pediatric topics, and I talk about, um, you know, kind of new statements that come out and try to say, I do a couple things. So instead of trying to be the first beat in news to say, like, I know the studies embargo until Monday, it's coming out and everybody's going to talk about it. One of the things I really love to do is let the embargo lift and let news organizations talk about it and watch families and watch online using social tools like Twitter and just searching. And then watching for a couple of days and see where myth is created or kind of what patterns come up. And then yeah. the next day write a blog and say, hey, like, this is what it feels like to me. There's a new policy statement on circumcision, for example, and here's what I think the Academy is saying, and here's what kind of opponents of that are saying, and here's maybe some information that you might want to read. And, and my goal is to act like a pediatrician online, just like I would with patients in clinic. And, you know, I, I firmly believe that health is really getting disrupted in a beautiful way. That we, as consumers of health and patients, preserving our wellness is going to be more and more in our hands and, and because we're going to have access to information. And so I, I ultimately want to share with families what I know and what I think science knows and what pediatrics, for example, knows and then what we don't know and how those limitations can really affect how we make decisions for our children. Right, yeah. And do you think that's what makes your blog so unique? I don't know if my blog <laughs> is that unique. I think what makes it unique is that I get to kind of shake hands with the hospital and I'm compensated for my work, so it allows me time out of clinic to really do this and to be passionate about it and to read studies and to talk with experts and come back and say, um, here's what I think, like, here's where you can go. And, or, you know, I had a really bad night, like my kids didn't sleep or they barfed on my shoes. I mean, you know, like we're doing this together. I, I really, I want, um, I want people to really understand how hard doctors work to get um, into, to get to insight and how much uh, partnership can be valued in the health space that um, I love going to clinic. I, I, I'm like enraptured by the experience of helping people get information and calm down or helping people get to the right person um, and helping get children diagnosed or helping um, you know, stop a disease pathology that could, could shorten a child's life. And I think this is just another tool, like a stethoscope. I mean, it, it really is just another way to help inform and give people information to say, here are my two choices. I can turn the car seat around when my child's one, or I can look at this data that says that when kids are between age one and two, they're 75% more likely to die in a car accident if they're facing the front. So we really want to keep these kids we're facing. Hard to get parents to do that, but maybe if I write a blog and do a video and tell them in clinic, maybe they'll use that science to protect their children. And over time, if we create changes in what and how families make decisions, we preserve these children's life and we live longer, healthier lives. Right. And I think it also helps a lot, too, that you seem like a real person on your blog. You're not just some physician out there who's talking about studies and they can't relate to you. You know, patients have a hard time with that. But yeah. you well, write about your I family think... and you're a real person that they can actually understand. Yeah. I mean, I think I, I talk a lot about how, you know, I throw myself under the bus a lot on the blog because <laughs> it's, well, it's real, right? I do all sorts of things wrong as a parent, um, like we all want to do. I mean, I think there's this really strong pressure right now to perfect parenthood. Um, and pediatrics is a part of that. Uh, you know, we really, as being a pediatrician, I really want to help families feel good about the decisions they make, but I think the stresses that we feel um, overwhelm all of us. And, and I think when I tell people what I don't know and what I do wrong, I think we realize how similar we all are and that we want the same thing. So, even when a family disagrees with the advice that I'm giving them sometimes, take something like vaccines. When families are really concerned or when they have hesitation about risks and side effects um, and anecdotes that they've heard, we may stand at a different, we may stand at different vantage points when we start. And, and the reality is like, I just want parents to understand that I, I want what they do. Like I want us all to have our heads hit the pillow at night and know that we're making the best decisions that we can. And we might not always come to the same decision, but I think, um, you know, I, I kind of live my life on my sleeve. I always have. It's just who I am. And uh, I'm, I'm not good at all things. And I'm certainly learning how to be a blogger and learning how to communicate and learning how to be a pediatrician. And I feel like the more we understand the limitations, too, of those that are helping us make decisions, the better we make decisions, right? I think um, um, 
if we claim to know more than we do, is when we really lose trust for a very good reason. I mean, that's right. when we'll lose the trust of people who come, at least as a clinician, people who come to get my advice, that I can't overpromise. That's the last thing I want to do. Mm -hmm. And what are you excited about here at Medicine X? Uh, well, yesterday was a surprise to me in the sense that uh, before Susanna's keynote in the morning, I really didn't think I was a self tracker, you know. And she started talking about her tight, her tight, her skinny jeans and things, and I thought, like, oh my gosh, not only am I a tracker, but I tell patients to track all the time. I say, like, when the rash changes, take a picture and bring it back to me. When when your child has a seizure and there's something different, and the neurologist hasn't figured it out, like, take, get off the video camera, like, keep a video camera in their room. Um, and I started to realize how much we're prescribing the self tracking, and that what we really need are, is this technology to build it. So, you know, this, for me, these conferences are, um, they're like spiritual fueling. They make me feel that um, all these dreams that I have about um, the new model of healthcare, that I can communicate with patients outside the exam room, that I can get all this educational content online so that when families come in, they can already watch that and then we can start at a more informed place where participatory care is really the norm. Like, coming here really makes me feel that it's, it's not a dream, but it's really very possible. And so um, being among friends and being around um, folks who are just so excited to use technology to improve care, um, I, go, I go back so much more ready to keep going. Because I, I, I wear a lot of hats and I, um, I, I sometimes get really exhausted. And um, this, is really, this is really fueling for me. So that's exciting. And I think um, just allowing um, the time and the quiet to listen to people tell their stories here uh, it's, it's an incredible reminder for me as um, having the privilege of being a care provider and um, going back and, and learning how to do better. I mean, every time I come to a technology conference, I, I believe that my insight into my patients and my communication gets better, however bizarre that sounds. I think it does. Great. Well, thank you so much for giving us the time to talk with you and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you. It's so <laughs> great to be here. Thank you.